What's a tip that everyone should know which might one day save their life? If you are being joked, make a touchdown signal, raise your arms straight up, then twist around, using your arms to break the joke. If they are very strong use the prayer method. Put your hands together in front of your chest, like you are praying. Shoot your arms between the choker's arms and then spin. If the tide begins to recede, and you can see a lot more of the ocean, run away. Immediately. By a lot more of the ocean he means on the horizon. If the ocean literally starts to rise, get the hell out of there. Although generally by that point you end up with maybe 60 seconds, but 60 seconds is better than 0 seconds. You're yeah, more likely to be attacked in a transitional space, going into and out of buildings, cars, and especially between the two. You let your guard down, because you're thinking about what you're going to do when you get there, not what you're doing right now and not what's going on around you. Stay alert, stay safe. If you need to break open a car window using a tool do not hit the middle, hit one of the corners. The middle of the window is reinforced to prevent it from being broke. Shortness of breath can indicate heart problems. My father told our family doctor about it, and they sent him for tests. They found problems, and did open heart surgery. It saved his life and I want more people to know about this seemingly unrelated symptom. If you have been on the fence for a while about being too cold to continue in a backcountry situation, you are already too cold. Immediately make emergency efforts to get warm. Being hypothermic severely clouds your judgment. If you're in a crowd, and there's a possibility of a human crush, go with the waves of people instead of against it, and, when possible, go backwards to the left to get out of it. If you're rigid, you'll get pushed over, and trampled to death and you absolutely don't want to get to the front. Edit, back and diagonally, not sure where I got left from. If you're hiking slash doing anything else outdoors alone, Tell someone where you're going, and when you should be back. If you become incapacitated, this will increase survival chances by a lot. As a lifelong Floridian, I see this all the time here, and elsewhere in the news. In the event of a disaster, stay the frick away from down at power lines. Don't walk along the street with them. Don't drive your car over them. Don't take selfies with them. They're thunder noodles, and have been known to kill. If you have been stabbed, leave the sharp object in the wound, until it can be treated by a professional. Sometimes the knife slash stick slash whatever, is the only thing sealing the wound, so you don't bleed out. On a similar note, if you for some reason get stabbed in the eye with a stick, cover both eyes. Moving your injured eye can cause more damage, and it's impossible to move your eyes independently, and if they aren't covered you'll instinctively look around with the uninjured one. If you you have a skin mole that has blurry edges, isn't symmetrical, is a weird shade of red, weeps fluids or acts like an open wound that won't heal, you might have skin cancer. Go to a doctor immediately. Melanoma kills fast. If you have benign skin moles, keep an eye on them. Get an idea of how they should normally look, so you'll notice if any begin to change, like I mentioned above. Don't forget to put on sunscreen. If you find yourself close to an electrical hazard, like a downed power line, keep your feet together and carefully hop away from the danger. The electric differential between your legs can fry you if the charge is high enough. Ever wonder why sometimes there are whole herds of animals that die from a single lightning strike? This is why. Edit. There are some very good comments below. In most cases you should shuffle your feet slowly instead. You may need to jump in some cases, if so it is crucial to start and end with both feet together when you break and resume contact with the ground i.e. a hop. Always shuffle or hop very carefully as a fall could lead to death. If you are in a car that is safe, do not leave the car unless it is necessary to do so. Never use brake cleaner before welding. If you get stabbed, do not pull it out. Since it's Christmas water your tree or don't get a real one. On an airplane, if the oxygen masks drop put yours on first then put it on the kids. It's fine for them to get lightheaded. But if you do then you both die. When pumping fuel, if there is a fire do not pull the nozzle out. Just stop the flow, if possible and back away. And hit the fire suppression system. If you hydroplane do not make any sudden inputs just keep her straight and slowly lift off the throttle. 
Do not downshift to slow down on icy roads. If a dog is going to attack you do not run. Make yourself look as big as you can, and yell and snarl like a maniac, failing that kick that dog. You are smart. You have two arms, two legs and a mouth. A dog only has a mouth. You can defend yourself. Believe in yourself. Above all my biggest pieces of advice is do not panic. Keep your wits about you. You are so much stronger than you think. Just don't panic. Easier said than done I know, but it's true. If you should be foolish enough to crash your car into water, find a sharp object. Attempting to open the door is fruitless until the pressure equalizes. Break the window glass and swim out that way. Do not jump in the water to save a drowning person, unless absolutely necessary I, e, a child etc. Drowning people tend to clasp on their rescuers and drag them under with them. Find something to throw, or a some sort of lifeline. Prop someone on their side when fear drunk and passed out. If they laying on their back and start vomiting they could asphyxiate themselves. If you're in the passenger seat of a car, never put your feet on the dashboard. In the event that you're in a car accident, knee bones into your skull won't end well. Edit to at, yes please don't do this in the driver's seat either lol. Get a co-gas detector in your house. One near the furnace and one near your bedroom. Cannot smell or see coal leaks from regular household furnaces. They are pretty inexpensive too. If you are ever being attacked or kidnapped by someone with a nose ring, earring, or any sort of visible piercing, tear it out. It hurts. Especially the nose ring. It's very inadvisable to carry condoms in your back wallet. The irregular cycles of heat it will experience due to being in and out of your pocket can cause the latex to expand slash contract multiple times before actual use, severely compromising the reliability. If you ever feel intense pressure in your chest that radiates up into your jaw you are probably having a heart attack. Source, had heart attack last month. If you ever get kidnapped and are in the kidnapper's vehicle, wait until you are around a lot of traffic and pull the steering wheel to make the car crash. People will immediately go to see if you are okay and call emergency vehicles. You're going to be injured or killed, whether you cause an accident or go to the second location anyways. Might as well pull attention to yourself. Thank you for silver. Pain on your right side? Push down slightly on it and cough. If pain intensifies it's most likely your appendix and you should get it checked out. Wife had two surgeries on it this year. Another option is a heel drop test. Stand on your tippy toes and then let your heels drop to the floor quickly. If you fall to the ground in pain, you need to have your appendix removed. I watched a buddy of mine use this method to identify appendicitis in someone else, then went on a couple years later to help someone else learn the same thing. If you have appendicitis you're already miserable and it is worth the potential pain of finding out. If you drop a loaded gun, do not try to catch it. Let it fall. Modern firearms do not just go off for like no reason. Trying to catch it makes it easier to accidentally pull the trigger. Before people go off about antique guns and blah blah yada yada. Unless you are at the range, your antique needs to be in its case or you are an irresponsible gun owner. Modern firearms do not just fire off like that. Even high points. Have a glass breaker slash seat belt cutter in your car. A lot of knives come with both on them, and can be as cheap as $15 to $20. Better to have something you don't need than to need something you don't have. We had a sheriff come in, to talk to us about active shooter situations. Going through that training, taught me a ton, but the one piece of advice I got that stuck with me was, have a plan, and every day go through the plan in your head. This will help you to not panic, if it actually happens. Never try to engage but if, god forbid, you must defend yourself then you swarm. Be savage and do not let up. Their due process was done, when they decided to bring a gun into your building. Can't state enough how much they advise to never engage, but have a plan for everything. If you feel an earthquake start, and the shaking doesn't piddle out after 5 or 10 seconds, assume it will be big, and take cover under something sturdy or an outside where there is no power lines or bits of building above your head. 
Hash edit because people are getting mad about the run outside part. That's the safest option. If you are right by the door and there is no adequate cover inside, and you have access to a clear space free of dangerous overhanging things. Whatever you do, don't stand in a doorway. That myth kills people. If duck and cover is the safer option, do that and go outside after the shaking stops. Don't try to walk in a strong earthquake. If you have balance issues, it messes up your equilibrium. Sometimes large earthquakes start out huge right away, and sometimes they wobble a bit before they hit a shoot strength. It depends on how far you are from the epicenter. If there was an earthquake at the beach you're on, and you see the water receding away, run to higher ground immediately, because a tsunami is coming. If you're in a town near water, and see the water in ditches or rivers flowing the wrong way, seek higher ground, because a tsunami is coming. Know how to swim. You don't need to be Michael Phelps, but it's great to be able to swim decently and tread water. Also, if you're ever kidnapped, try to leave personal items along the way, like drop a ring or earring in the car or something. It can be helpful to find you, and as evidence in trial edit, first gold. Thank you. If you're stabbed, or impaled and the offending object is still in your body, do not pull it out. Doing so can make you bleed out. If you believe someone is in your home, whatever you do, don't turn on the lights. As much as you'd feel more comforted, if the lights were on, you know your house better than anyone. You would have an easy time moving around your house, while the intruder would be a lot slower. If you are stuck in your car during a dire emergency, take the headrest off your seat, if applicable, and use it to smash the window. 